fucking wave, man. Hello out there in the internet world. I am Pretzel Bear. This is a the first in a series of videos that are novice to intermediate level painting discussions and ideas. Um, myself, I've only been painting mecha miniatures for going on three years. I've learned a lot. Um, through trial and error, I've learned some of what not to do, some of what to do. Um, as you can see, I generally tend to paint in batches. Um, I do some very unconventional things because I've taught myself how to do it. Uh, I do not have an artistic background. So this is just for me to go over some of what I do and how I do it. And then we'll have some more interesting discussions and follow up videos. Um, welcome to Pretzel Bears Painting Board, maybe. Um, I kind of like the PBPB aspect of that. Um, as you can see, I use my computer desk for my painting workspace, it's the only place I have for it. Um, again, part of what makes what I do a little different than what most people do. Uh, however, um, some of the things I use. First off, my magnification. I'm 50 years old. I am not a young kid anymore. My eyesight is not what it once was. This is a set of lighted magnifiers. By neat and handy. Um, I get them on Amazon for 20 to 30 bucks a set. They come with four different levels of magnification. They can either use ear stems or like I use the headband because it works better for me. Um, I also have my reader glasses so I can take off my regular glasses and have a better view through those and they work really really well with the magnifiers. This piece of technology right here has saved me more frustration and more time than anything else. Um, took a little bit to get used to them, but they are magnificent. <clears throat> okay, um, priming. Makeup brushes, large, round, soft brushes. Um, I use my center kit in my um, palette uh, because it can hold more. Actually, I'm tempted to start using the larger palette even. Uh, these palettes were part of a set from Walmart for five dollars. I mean, not, not much at all. But you get your primer on here, you load up your brush, and then you just very lightly coat your mini with it. The brush can hold a lot of primer, goes a long way, and it, it can work on mechs, even little recon mechs, uh, as well as drop ships and some of the bigger devices and buildings. Um, so yeah, makeup brushes. Uh, they're not very expensive. My wife picked some out for me. Also, another thing my wife has helped me with is when I am washing, when I'm doing a black wash on top, or a dark wash on top or whatever color it may be. Cosmetic sponges will take off the excess and not pull it out of the grooves and it'll leave enough behind that you'll get the effect you're looking for. So makeup brush for priming, makeup sponges for uh, the, uh, the wash, um, the sealant, I've been using this Lucky Varnish Ultra Matte. I was using matte, uh, a, a Reaper matte, 
uh, brush on sealer. I've got a bottle of it here. Reaper 09107. Sorry, too much stuff. 09107. Um, but for a matte finish, it left a slightly glossy coat. So uh, I was at a model train store. Never, never doubt model train stores for their utility for painting minis. And I found this ultra matte lucky varnish. And I've almost used my first bottle of it. It's gotten me through, what, 100, 120 max, maybe two, maybe 150 max, and half a dozen drop ships for one bottle. So definitely worth the investment to get a good quality, non-shiny top coat. It's a good protective, and it doesn't have a glossy finish. Um, I have a painting handle. This painting handle um, was from the same company that I got my exemplar wet palette from. And this painting handle is amazing because it just uses standard bottle caps and a little bit of uh, plastic tack, uh, plastic putty, blue putty, whatever you want to call it. Um, got a whole lot, a whole pack of them over here. Uh, various amounts of blue tack on them each, but you know, you can just pop a mech on, get a good seal. I happen to have peripheral neuropathy in my hands. The stack, the deck is stacked against me when it comes to painting, uh, because. Chemo left peripheral neuropathy in my hands and feet. I drop things a lot. When I first started, before before I started getting some of my uh, technology that I use, uh, I was working on assembling some uh, metal Battletech mechs uh, from Ironwind Metals. And I hadn't learned about accelerant or super glue and I hadn't learned about painting handles I hadn't started using green stuff yet and I was having a hell of a time trying to get things to set up I ended up throwing away probably half a dozen mechs because I was just too infuriated by the process um, but the technology comes an ability to do even more um, but this handy dandy paint handle I can hold it there I can hold it there I don't even need the, the, the hand hold most of the time I can set it on my desk and the hand hold just sort of sits there absolutely fine um, I don't use it for everything but there are times I need it if, I, if a mech hits the floor more than once I go back to the handle um, and I keep a stock of bottle caps laying around and, and blue tack. I have another pack of blue tack if I ever get more bottle caps. Um, so, you know, again, I'm making up for some personal issues with technology. Um, occasionally, I will um, add magnets to Max. None of my magnetized mechs are out here. I haven't magnetized any of this group uh, so that they can torso twist at the waist. I'm not perfect at it. I am okay. Um, you know, I have two different packs of magnets that are just, you know, little tiny hobby magnets. Appropriate size drill bit. Drill in just deep enough. Uh, most people who do it have a mark on their drill bit when they're deep enough. I need to do that. I haven't yet. I've only done maybe half a dozen or a dozen of them. So I'm still working on my technique. Like I said, novice to intermediate. <laughs> I am by no means an expert. However, I have what I what I lack in long-term artistic ability I make up for in sheer quantity of units that I have painted. Uh, units, buildings. 
drop ships. This drop ship is currently under repair. Um, oh, one thing I want to say. If you're watching this video and you are a 3D modeler, please don't do this crap. This is really tiny and really fragile. I mean, just sitting here, I can wiggle it. I can't tell you how many of these um, Overlord leg assemblies have broken on me. People who manufactured them were nice enough to send me more. More broke. So last night, I sat down and I removed them all from this one. And I repaired this one. And it works. I need to go back and paint in the pit here. This is one of the ones I replaced. Um, and then give this one a little bit of touch up. But it's almost done. It needs a hot This one I have assembled a 3D STL or an STL. 3D. Can you tell I'm not scripted? Um, 3D, uh, an, an STL file. Um, I actually am still learning the 3D modeling process. So right now my forte is in cutting apart various STL files and reassembling them, which is what I did. I changed out the foot because I liked one of the feet better than the other. And then I went through and I um, got the doors off of janky, thin, basic connectors and have them attached to the plate. Um, this is more realistic, but what I've designed, uh, once we get it 3D printed, I will have to show it. Um, what I've designed will hold up much better. That was an example of my drops right there. Um, always keep an X-Acto knife on hand. You never know when you're gonna need one. Keep extra blades. You never know when they're gonna need one. I have created my own custom wash for this company. This company is Pretzel Bears Regulars. Um, so, you know, I, I've got my own custom dark wash. Um, these mechs, this company, um, these are what, units 120 through 135 or some such. Um, I started with a black primer from Reaper. Uh, all of the paints I'm using, aside from my third company, which is using a speed paint, and some of my buildings that used a speed paint, are from Reaper, Reaper Minis. Um, this company, I'm doing um, black primer and a color called green liner. The black primer is number 09214. I really, really like it. Um, I don't have the green liner number in front of me. But I use the green liner as the base coat. That way, anything that happens to show through from the dragon green color that I'm putting everywhere has a greenish black undercoat to it. So it adds a layer. Um, and I put on the green liner the same way I put on the primer. So I use the makeup brush and try to go as light as possible. Uh, I didn't always. That's something I've only been doing for the last month, month and a half. Um, I'm learning as I go. So progress, learning as we go. Uh, from there, um, these all have Dragon Green 09410 as the overall main green color. Then I'm adding on top of it, well, show here. This green here is Jade Green 09015 from the Reaper line. And it's a good, nice, medium green color. Balances out the darker dragon green quite well. Then my lighter green color, 
I'm doing moth green, 09248. Um, I think it used to be called slime green and they changed the name of it. I love, I love it for a color uh, just because it, it adds a little bit of brightness to an otherwise dark paint, paint scheme. And when I was first making the first mech, that's all I had. And it was starting to look a lot like Jade Falcon. I'm an Inner Sphere fan. I'm not a Clanner fan. And I did not want to make Jade Falcons. That's when I found the magic of this darker metallic color here. It's called Scorched Metal. It is 09125. Again, the dropsies, it happens. Uh, I'm not even going to apologize for it. Uh, I will acknowledge it because I want to take the power away from it. And then the cockpits of all of these are getting Sunrise Orange 09406. Um, and before I add any more colors to these, I'll go back and do the cockpits with my smallest brush. Uh, then I, as I'm adding colors, I will go back and I will reline any of the glass structures that need paint over them. Uh, and I'll have to show how I do that at some point. This is not how I paint. This is what I use. Okay, so I'm staying focused on the technology and the, and the items here. Um, the next thing I was going to show, I've gone through the, you know, I use standard zap it or any of the other you know modeling super glues and then the, the zap kicker or any of the other quick set spray ons i do keep a compass for when i need to you know a compass and a protractor for when i need to do weird angle things and actually calculate them another thing i am starting to do this is my trutzborg 3D printed dropship. Again, the same company, same colors, but I've added some writing on the unit. This this being a pretzel bear regular dropship, playing up on the pretzel side of it. You can read that. This is the naughty. Okay. A-N-O-T-T-Y. I also have the twisted. Um Got my little drop ships, Confederates, and the Manatee. One of these is the Black Bear Cub. One of these is a Brown Bear Cub, and one of them is a Grizzly Cub, I believe, is what I settled on for names. Um, and they'll probably get their names added as well. I am not going to tell you to use a paintbrush to paint on writing on your mechs. That's an advanced skill. I've tried it. It did not work. However, these are acrylic paint pens. Posca just happens to be the brand. Uh, I've got a couple packs in here. These are ultra fine tipped pens. So once you get the paint flowing, you can write with them as if it were a pen or a pencil and the paint will just keep flowing. That's how I'm writing on these units. Save yourself the time. If you can afford it, get some paint pens if you wanna add writing, because painting with a paintbrush is a skill unto itself and can take time to master, okay? Uh, people who can do it amaze me. They really do. Uh, there are some amazing talented painters out there. I don't consider myself one. I'm average at best, in my mind. Tuck might argue with you. Goji might argue with you. Bishop might argue with you. Heck, half of my circle of friends will argue with you. But I'm going to keep it real. I make up for a lack of skill with technology, <laughs> okay? Um, brushes are the one area I don't frequently skimp on, okay? Um, somebody might shoot me for admitting this, but when I'm top coating, if I can't dip it, I use 
my large um, tank vehicle brushes. Put it on, or no, uh, top coating. Top coating with my ultra matte. Um, I use one big brush to put it on, and then a couple other big brushes to smooth it out to get rid of any clumping or any bubbling. Uh, and then I just wash the brushes as I go because they do fill up. And the brushes, that's going to happen. Um, you'll notice here I have some really tiny brushes. I like the Insane Detail brush. I like the Psycho. Insane Detail, or you Psycho? This is the Psycho. This is the smallest brush I own, and I own a lot of them because they do wear out. But by using brush soap, keeping the brushes clean, um, not letting the paint dry out in them, so I stop and clean my brushes between minis. I, I sometimes get through two or three before I stop and do a cleaning. Um, keep some of my medical gauze around for help drying off brushes and cleaning off brushes because it works. Um, but I have a variety of brushes. You know, there's a really tiny brush in there. You can't really see that. And I've experimented with different brands. Um, I, I don't hold one brand over any of the others. These are um, the Wolf's Bristle brushes uh, out of Australia. I've got uh, German manufactured brushes. I've got some off name brushes that I don't use as often. I don't skimp on brushes because the brush can make up for a lot of stuff. Okay. Um, that being said, so I've gone over the paints I use and the quality of the paints speak for themselves. Uh, I've gone over my handle. Oh, I do have an exemplar wet palette. I need to find the lid for it and where I set it. It's right there. So, um, you know, I've got the pads for it and everything. <clears throat> um, I use the wet palette for prolonged painting sessions. If I'm going to be painting the same colors for a few days in a row, I will use the wet palette and keep it wet and add water to it frequently to keep it going, to keep the paint from drying out. Um, if I'm just doing a quick painting run, that's where I just use my little palettes because they work. No harm, no foul there. A um, couple more examples of some buildings I've painted and the different textures and different top coats that I've used on them. Um, they're fun. You know, they turned out really well. I like them. I also am going to be doing a video soon on Tester's paints, Tester's primer, and Tester's top coat. And to facilitate that, I have a box of bits that I picked up from Fortress. Battlefield debris. And I mean, you know, here's an imperfect. It's an analog for a timber wolf missing an arm. Sadly, there's no other timber wolf arm in there. I do have other mech arms I could put on, and there's a bunch of tank tanks in here. So when I do that video, I'm going to take some of these bits out and prime them, and I'll video that. And then I'll come in and start using the tester's paints. I want to actually try it on a couple first. Oh, and just to show you how far I'm willing to experiment with the brushes, I even have, before I settled on the makeup brushes, I even got some really large soft bristle brushes. So, I mean, I've got a little bit of everything here, all told. Um, but what you see in the middle of the desk is what I use most often. You know, I use my ultra matte 
I have a paint shaker. Um, sometimes sitting and shaking a bottle will aggravate my neuropathy. So I can, you know, pick up a bottle, stick it on here for up to a minute. I'm not going to drop it. It works. It gets the paint nice and agitated and mixed up. Um, I also have Uncure. If you're going to have model glue and or sealant, or uh, accelerant, get yourself some glue remover. Um, I literally had all six landing base slots on this dropship filled up. And I uncured them all. Uh, some of them broke on the way out, but I salvaged three whole assemblies and was able to reuse two of them immediately. This one was salvaged, but just by sitting on my desk, it is already broken. Again, 3D modelers need to do a little bit better because making that small of a connection, people's stuff is going to break. And those don't, I mean, you can glue them together. They work, but it doesn't look right. And sadly, uh, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, um, which is why I've resisted doing art for so long. But we're here now, and we're doing it, so we're good. Um, but yeah, between a paint handle, drills, um, I've got some sculpting tools, um, nippers, uh, little flush cut nippers are really handy to have. I actually have medical scissors for uh, cutting some green stuff up and things like that. Um, I keep a, a um, cutting board on my desk. I try to do most of my painting on the cutting board. Um, I do all the cutting on the cutting board. Uh, and that saves my desk from damage. Um, again, you know, palette. You can use just about anything as a palette. But these, this was a three-pack of palettes. Again, like $4 or $5 or something. And, I mean, they're decent. Um, here's an example. There's paint in the bottom of this one. And I can just sort of fleck it out. And boom. There's no more paint in that one. It's been, a, it's been a couple weeks. I need to go actually scrub that out. But uh, if, I, if I get a lot of paint pooled, once it dries, it can just be popped right out. I talked about my Posca pens. Um, I have all sorts of... Oh, maybe I do have a Corso twist I can show you. Um, yep. This is one of my magnetized Phoenix Hawks. Um, again, it's not perfect, but it gets the point across and I can get a 60 degree torso twist. Uh, another thing I've started doing, painting an off contrasting color on the front hex facing. I need to go back and do that on the rest of my mechs. If you want, you can paste a mech designator on there as well. You don't have to. Um, I'm probably going to leave that uh, just contrasting and then go back with Posca pins and put the mech names around the rest of the base because uh, I'm not going to try to paint with brushes. I've already been down that road. I've tried too many times, and it just gets frustrating. Um, I have more drop ships that I need to paint. You know, um, I've primed this one obviously with black, black primer, and it, it's again for the regulars. Um, manatee dropship. I need to go back. The and these legs are not printed in the same scale. Um, oh, that's one thing I'll talk about. Um, one thing. No, I'll save that for another conversation. Uh, I'm trying to stay a little focused here. Um, so down the road, I will be talking about mech scale, map scale, and what it means. I'm going to be doing a how to paint with testers 
paints and to make them look good. Um, I didn't even get the military grade paints. I went for the brighter paints. Um, and then I've got, you know, a whole pile of Shylon fighter craft. They're going to be built up for the regulars as well. I need to do a video where I show the first company I made, the Golden's Gorillas, because um, they're an entirely different company, different paint scheme. Uh, they were the first company I started making, and I um, apparently hated myself because their bodies are purple. Four layer, four four color layers of camo, not four paint layers, but a base color and then three camo colors on top of it. The arms are red, four colors. The legs are blue, four colors. Again, base color and then, you know three additional colors for for camo effect and then the cockpits are four different layers of yellow i apparently really didn't like myself that was crazy insane fun i got really fast at it but when i did this company i made this company a whole lot simpler again what a mech looks like in this company you know you can see the the scorched metal, you can see the jade green, you can see the moth green. I've based them. I need to go back and add that front facing paint contrast color. Um, and then again, some of them have been magnetized in the middle so that they twist. One of these days, I'll do a basic magnetization video. Um, I'll actually get a video of me painting some of the regulars and adding the layers of colors. There might be some time compression there um, to make the video a little more interesting. Uh, I know this video is a little boring, but this is just me starting out. So if you've, bear, if you've been with me for this long, thank you for bearing with me. Um, thank you for visiting my painting table and computer table, obviously. Uh, oh, this is the, when I say four different camo colors, this is the general camo for the regulars. So you can see four different blues, a darker blue, and then, you know, success, successively lighter blues until all four colors were on. Same with the purples. The reds are a lot harder to see, but you can see some of the modeling in there. And then uh, with my wife's help, because neuropathy, uh, we went back and added decals. They have an Egyptian theme um, for their history. Um, scarabs for offense and onyx for defense. And then some of the bigger units get some of the bigger decals. Uh, just a touch of something fun they did. And then... This drop ship is broadsword, an actual map scale broadsword, which is why I want to discuss map scale. I actually calculated map scale for this based on 30 meter hexes and uh, inch and a quarter hexes. So 30 meters per inch and a quarter, and then converted it to millimeters to come up with the exact scale. Um, what I've been finding online or through other vendors uh, like Ironwind Metals, which I love their stuff, so it's not a complaint, the broadsword they make is a lot larger. So I'll go into that in detail later. Um, but these are trial units for my third company that I'm working on starting. I want to get through the regulars before I dive in too heavily. And this is a sky blue base coat with cloud blue speed paint did i get the name right cloud burst blue speed paint so there's actually a lot of layering to the colors on these you can see it here even though it's just a lighter blue and then that one speed paint on top of it that speed paint added a lot of depth to that color 
And then I've got a couple different grays that I'm going to go back and accent with and a metallic blue. I don't know if it'll come up on camera, but these legs were painted metallic blue directly and I did not go back and speed paint them. So on these units, gun barrels are probably going to be the metallic blue on the drop ships, the metal bits. Like I got to go back and do these landing gear. They're going to get the, the, the metallic blue color that I'm using. Uh, also a Reaper mini product. Um, I just love their paints for the price. Paint and price matter. Um, I have nothing against Citadel paints. They're fine, just more expensive. Um, whereas I found Reaper paints 20 years ago when I was trying my hand at painting some D&D minis. I was bad at it. I can't paint faces for anything. Uh, but I used it. I also keep several sets of tweezers on my desk because you never know when you're going to need them. When I have things fall on the floor, they pick up dog hair tweezers or how I get that removed. Um, and then I have my paint washing station. I, you know, refill that every few days, clean it out, refill it, uh, try not to let it get too gunky. But anyway, that's what I have. Um, if you have questions about any of this stuff, feel free to leave comments. Feel free to ask them, and if I can answer them, I gladly will. Again, I am by no means a professional. You will never see the things I'm creating posted by camo specs or anything like that. I'm not that good. I'm, I'm good. I'm good enough to be happy. And uh, Tuck is a very wise man. When you're painting, especially for novice painters, keep in mind, good not perfect there should be flaws if we were in the 31st or 32nd century and we actually had battle mechs there would be flaws on them especially for three and four hundred year old units it just happens um, so having flaws in your paint is not a bad thing it just adds character because some of these mechs would be two, three, four hundred years old. Now, well, two, three hundred years old, hundred years old, and anything that gets repainted that many, you know, gets repainted over that many years, is going to have flaws. So it's okay to have flaws in your painting. They're just character, okay? And go out and paint something. I have faith in you. I have faith in all of you. You can do this. If I can do it with my medical issues. If I can do it with my space limitations, and if I can crank out mechs like this, you can too. I have faith in you. Thanks, everybody.